everybody. Hopefully you can see me here. I'll get get it so I can see myself. Make sure you say something when you come in so I know you can hear me okay. Happy Sunday. Hit the enter button. There we go. Oh, we got people coming in. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Deb. How is everybody this evening? Yes, but make sure you say something when you come in so I know you can hear me okay. Is the sound okay tonight? Hi, Janan. So hopefully everybody's having a nice Sunday. It's been a really nice day. It got kind of warm in my sewing room, though. The sun's very warm today, but it's not as warm outside. Oops, second, I got to scroll so I can see what people are saying here. Hi, everybody. Jackie's here. Denise. Hi, Lori. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Marianne. Oh, Bob's here. So we're going to make some purses tonight. And um, I had no idea that people would be so excited about purses. <laughs> I enjoy doing some sewing projects, just just fun things to sew. Oh, hi, Jeanette. Hi, hi Martha. Hi, Kathy. Oh, Jan's here. Bunch of people. Awesome. So this little book, from this is from a company called Zaka Workshop. And they this book is such a nice book because it has 14 patterns in it to make different kinds of purses. And all the patterns are in the back here on these sheets. And then you also get two purse clasps with the book, which I thought was just so cool. And what a great deal. I mean, 14 patterns and the book and the two purse clasps. So these are the two clasps that come with the book. So we're going to use both of these tonight in the different little, the little purses that we're going to make. And what a better deal. So I just thought it was really cool. So there's a bunch of other purses in here. And we'll probably do a couple more because there's some bigger ones that would be fun to do. Like um, that you could actually carry, you know, as a purse. Like there's, um, if you look in the back of the book, there's um, a whole list of all the different purses that you can make in the book and then all the different clasps you need. And I do have most of the clasps now so on the website. In fact, I think I have them all now. Um, and there's some pretty good size ones. Like one of the, the purses in the book is this 50s purse with the handles on it. And this is the clasp for that. That's a, one of the bigger ones. And a lot of people have been very interested in the bobble carry tote, the carry-all tote, this little tote bag. Isn't that cool? And this is the, the class for it. So I have these on the website now. Um, there's a pencil case in the book. And this is the, the long skinny class for that. And this one purse that's on here, I think this is really cool. It's kind of a modern looking purse. I thought that was really cool. And that's this is the class for it. So you can see how big it is. You know, like here's my hand. So it's a pretty good size uh, purse class. So here's one of those, and let's see. Um, oh, the other one I thought that was so cute was this little other one that's in the front cover, this one with the little baubles on the top. So here's the class for that. That was a smaller one. And let's see, what else? Oh, there's a really cute little tiny change purse in here. Um, and then this is the little class for it. See, it's just real small. So this one's cute. So yeah, these are all up on the website. So if you just go to the website and you know, like search in the little search box um, for for purse clasp, you'll you'll all of this stuff will come up. And then let's see. Oh, the other one that was cool I liked was that Kirby that Kirby clasp. And that one is a glass case in here. So I thought that was really neat. So I just thought these were this was a nice book, and I just thought it was a good deal for twenty bucks. You got all that stuff. So. Anyway, all of this stuff is available, so if you want to make some more of the projects in here, and I think I'm going to try to do at least one more purse in here, and the one that everybody's been asking about is um, either the 50s purse with the handles on it or that carry-all tote. So that's probably another one that we'll do. But I wanted to do tonight a couple of the simple purses and ones that 
the, the clasps that come with the book. So you didn't have to buy anything extra. All you needed was just the clasps. So, or the, the book and the, cla the clasps that came with it. So we're just going to make a couple of cute little coin purses or little pouches tonight. And give me a second here. I'll lay the clasps out of the way. Oh, and there's one other one. This one was for, this is kind of neat with the little flat ones up here. The little flat clasp at the top. This one was for the um, wristlet. There's like a little wristlet that you could put like um, some like um, cards in, like your credit cards. And then it has a little thing that goes around the wrist. So I thought that was cute. And then there's more of the clasps that, of the ones that are in the book. But each project in the book tells you which clasp and then there's a product number. And if, even if you search the product number on our website, those product numbers, that ZW number, will come up so you can find it. So, okay. So the ones that we're going to do tonight, we're going to make this one, which is called the Mod Coin Purse. So it's kind of neat because it's a little rounded. And when it opens up, it's got some nice, it's open enough so you can really get quite a bit in there. And this fits on the smaller of the two clasps. Okay. And then we're going to make this little square pouch and this one has like a little boxed bottom at the bottom. I wanted to use this one. I'm going to use this one. It's a little bigger. See it opens up and it's a little bigger. And this is the, the larger of the two um, clasps. And I'm going to use this one. I think I'm going to put my USBs. I, I carry USB sticks with me all the time and I just wanted something bigger that I could carry all my USB sticks in. So I thought that's what I'd use this one for. I made it kind of patriotic. Now tonight when I make the purses, I'm going to do them in the opposite. I, I cut one of each <laughs> out. So I made one in gray and one in blue. And I'm just going to do them the opposite of what they are for these. So they'll be different ones. Okay. Now, the, the, the company that did these is called Zacco Workshop. And I tried a couple of their little um, designs because I wanted to see, you know, do something that I could try first. Um, before I tried to do some of the Kimberbell embroidered purses. And we'll probably do some of those eventually too. But I, I ran into immediate problems. Is that the classic coin purse? No, um, Lynn, this one, this one that we're going to make, this one's called the Mod, the Mod coin purse. Mod purse, is that what it's called? I'll find it here in a second. The mod coin purse. That's the one we're going to make. The one that I tried first was the classic coin purse. I just bought one little design, that, one little pattern that this gal had done. And it was this little purse here. And I tried this purse, I bet you, six times before I got it to work. And so I learned a lot of things as I was trying to make this one little purse. And all of a sudden, I was just able to do them. So let me give you my tips right away <laughs> so that you don't have to struggle like me. And, um, oh, this one, you mean the, the square one? This one's called the square pouch in the book. Okay? So what I learned about these little purses is they work extremely well with, um, she talks about fusible fleece to put on the inside of the, um, the lining. So when I cut out my pieces, there was a couple, that's a couple, one of the things that I learned. So the first thing I learned is that it, when it says cut to, like each one of the patterns, this is for the mod coin purse. And what I did is I took those patterns out of the back, you know, that, that are back here. I took those and I just photocopied the one that I wanted to use, and I use that as a pattern instead of using it. Um, instead of using that, I don't like to use my good patterns and then ruin them. So I just photocopied that that portion of the pattern, and I did the same thing for the square pouch, which is this one right here. Okay, so that's what I would recommend you do: is just copy those patterns off, so you don't have to cut up your nice patterns, and then you'll have you can use these and pin through them and whatever and then if they ru get ruined you can photocopy it again. So I don't photocopy you know normally designs but I like to use this um, I like to do it when I do patterns because I don't want to ruin my good patterns. Okay so that's the first thing I did is I found my pattern I wanted and on the pattern it actually tells you what you have to cut. So like this is going to be a standard um, sewing pattern so we need to cut two of the outside fabric 
Okay, so I cut two pieces for the outside of my purse. And then it says to cut two for lining, so I wanted this to be my lining. Okay, and then it says to cut two of fusible fleece. So when I was first trying these, I have some fusible batting that I was using because I had a lot of it and I was trying that and I was really struggling because I could not get these clasps on and the fusible batting is much thicker and I just wasn't having good luck with it, especially with this little small purse that I made. So I really like the plain old Pellon fusible fleece. Um, it's 987F. I've been using this for years for different things. It's a little poofy. It's not too stiff, and it just and it irons on and it stays on really well. So that's what I would recommend for a lot of these purses. Now she does recommend some other options for some of the larger purses. So make sure you read the directions in the book about what she recommends for product. Um, for instance, one of the other ones I made was this little wallet. And this fits like on that, that little bit bigger clasp we're going to use tonight. And what she recommended was the fusible fleece for the outside. But then on these little pockets, she recommended a um, fusible interfacing. So I actually use Shape Flex, and that seemed to work very well. Um, or when you copy them, it is it just make sure you copy it at 100%, Barb. So I, I don't have any trouble. Just make sure it's copying at 100%. Don't change your size because you don't want it to be resized. So, but this one then I have fusible fleece that I adhered to the outside fabric, but then I adhered um, some shape blocks to this pocket just to give it some body. Okay, and these smaller ones, some of them she uses interfacing or like shape flex instead of the fusible fleece because then it's not quite so thick especially for like the pockets so make sure you read the direction and then she'll tell you what type she's using but the plain old Pellon fusible fleece works very well so that was the first thing I learned when I was trying to learn how to make this little purse I bought this little pattern and I wanted to try to make these little purses so the other thing I learned was that not all glue works so I tried several glues, I never had any luck. So I finally just put all these little purses away and stopped trying. I was, I was done, I couldn't get them to work. Well, what brought me to try it again was I found a glue and it's called Fabric Fusion. Fabric Fusion dries very clear and it really adheres. It's a permanent, it says permanent fabric adhesive. And boy, I tell you, this stuff dries well, it dries clear. So if you make a little boo-boo and you have kind of a mess, it dries clear and you can't see it. So um, that's the other thing I learned while I, during my journey of making these little purses is the glue makes a big difference. So we have this on the website as well, Fabric Fusion. So a lot of you have already purchased it. Um, so that works really well for me. I've, I've gotten along really well. As soon as I got this glue, I can basically get any of these little purses done that I want. So I had a lot of trouble before that. So I went back to this one after making some larger ones. And look, I got the little one done. I was so excited when I got this done. I sent a picture to Judy and I think one to Lynn because I could never get this little purse to work. And I thought it turned out really cute. So this was a little coin purse. It's a real small little coin purse. You could put your put this in your purse and put your coins in it. Okay. Um, I wanted to try something with handles. She has this little pattern here, isn't this cute with the little handles? And it's a real small purse. Um, opens up nice. So I got this one. I've tried this one. This is from some uh, Irish shop pop fabric. <laughs> so this one was really fun. And let's see what other ones have I made. Oh, I made this one. I really like this one. It was a little like a little poofy pouch and it has this one has a place where I can put a chain on it. Has little hearts on the top. And then look how this one opens. It opens real it's like wide mouthed on the top. So it opens up really wide. And it has a little pocket inside. So this one was really fun. 
So I, I kind of branched out and I'm learning a lot about these purses and they actually go together really well. So when I chose some to start with tonight, I wanted to try choose some simple ones so that you can just kind of get your feet wet making them. And then some of these we will do later because they're a little harder and they go together a little differently. And then this was probably one of my favorite ones is this one is a curvy class one too. This was another one of her patterns and this is called the curvy clutch and it has that curved clutch in it so but isn't that cool I like that one real well this one has a gusset in it yeah <laughs> Judy said Jan had a lot of rejects before she did these yes I did I threw away I don't know how many purses I threw away especially the smaller ones because I could not get the clasp in so after I got the glue right we were good so anyway so that now you can learn from all my mistakes I can get you started right away so you don't have to worry about having a lot of frustration with it because now I know what to do and I can help you so okay so the first clip purse we're going to make tonight is this little mod purse this little mod coin purse it opens up real nicely and you know I just thought these would be so cute to make as gifts for Christmas and then you know lots of times we give gift cards and stuff wouldn't that be fun just to put a gift card in here and make the outside something cute that is meaningful to the recipient and then you could put a gift card inside and then they'd have another little gift so um, they're, they're, the little clasps are rather inexpensive <laughs> yes I did Lynn. Lynn Lynn said that I made her do the hardware first so what got me to go back and try these again is that there was a Kimberbell um, we took a Kimberbell class in June and I was able to get the class spin for that that was the very first one but I had found that glue because that's the one that Kimberbell recommended so after I got that and she did it first and then I went back and did one and then now I'm kind of a I'm kind of a class purse fanatic now because I really enjoy doing these so anyway so we're gonna make this one first it's very simple to sew it's simple sewing we're going to do quarter inch seams so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my camera around here in a second here get some of these little purses off my desk okay so if you look at the mod purse um, it's on page 14 of the book it gives you a little instruction on the book turn the camera around here and it tells you you know outside what, how much fabric you need up here and it tells you what purse clasp you need it's the ZW0109 so that's the smaller of the two in your book so we'll use the smaller one and then it tells you you know how to cut it out you need two purse outsides you need two purse linings and you need fusible fleece so this one says fusible fleece two purse outsides so that's what I did and then you're going to adhere your fusible fleece to the outside so this time I'm going to use this as my outside on this purse and these are my linings here okay and so I have my fusible fleece fused on both of these okay but then she has she has minimal instructions I mean a lot of her instructions are very simple kind of gives you a size of the purse over here but she says construction steps follow the same process used for the lovely little coin purse on page 11 and 12 so I'm actually going to go back to left page 11 and 12 for my instructions because they're put together the same way the pictures in this one are kind of curved at the top and this one actually has a flat top because of the way it goes together see how it's flat at the top so this clasp is flat instead of curved and it also is going to give you like a, almost like a little gusset on the side so that it opens up wider at the mouth and that I thought that was really cool because I liked this purse because it opened up wider okay all right so it says number one adhere the fusible fleece to the wrong side of each of the purse outsides which I have already done so the two purse outsides with right sides together starting and stopping at the end of the seam mark so if you look on your instructions see these little these little marks right here that's where we want it we want to sew from here around to here and we're going to back stitch or tack stitch those those areas right there okay I've also learned a couple of other things like I said I, I learned about the 
stabilizer or the batting. I'm using fusible fleece, not that fusible batting. It was way too um, stiff and thick. And these just work so much better this way. Okay, so I'm going to lay my pattern on here. Get a pen. And I'm going to mark... And you can kind of see where it's going to be because it's going to be like right where that little that little straight line and then the curve starts. So we're just going to mark this on here. I'm not sure how, I mean, I, I've done a lot of sewing from sewing patterns. So this was kind of like a normal, I mean, these were very normal look patterns and very simple to follow. Her instructions are very, very easy. She has good pictures in the book. Okay, so we're going to mark both of those so we know where that little part is. And you can kind of visually see it because you can see where that little point comes. Okay. All right, so we're going to sew. I'll put one more pin down here. We're going to sew using a quarter inch seam from here all the way around the bottom to the other side. And when I use a quarter inch seam on my machine, you could use a piecing foot if you'd like. I actually prefer to use the J-foot because it's a little longer and it travels over some of these bumps a little bit better. So I'm going to use the piecing stitch on my machine. So I'm going to go to the sewing tab on my machine and I'm going to go to my Q tab, which is my quilting tab. And I'm going to go to Q02 because what it does, that is the piecing stitch. And if you can see down here, hopefully you can see it when I bring this down. I don't know if I can get close enough. It's moved my needle over to the right just a little bit at the 5.5 millimeter um, width. So what it's done, it's moved it over, and now I can run the edge of my fabric right along the edge of this foot, and I have a quarter of an inch. And I don't have to take off the J foot, because I like to use that J foot for more, most of my sewing. So that's how I, I produce my quarter inch seam. Okay. Just get this laid here so you can see better. I'm going to start right here, but I also want to do a tacking stitch. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put the edge of my foot right along the edge of the fabric, right on my pin there, and I'm going to drop my needle. I think I'm just a little bit off, so let me bring this in just a little bit. There we go. And then what I like to do, you can do a back tack. You can physically go backwards. Or you can do a tacking stitch in place. I have a tendency to do the tacking stitch in place, but either one is fine. Um, I'm going to do that. And I usually do it a couple of times. I'll take the first stitch. I might just push my foot controller down. It, the machine will take one stitch, and then I'll do it again. Well, I do back tacking. I have a tendency to like go over where I need to go. So um, I like the, the, the tack in place. So now I'm going to move this. I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to sew with my edge of my fabric along my foot. Around the curves. Just take your time going around the curves. And I also chose these because they were a little bit bigger purses and they were just a little bit easier to handle. You know, you can get your hands into them and you can get the, it's easier to put the clasps on when, they're, when they have a little bit bigger um, hardware. I, I have found, even though this piece of hardware is small, it actually goes in pretty easy on this purse. Okay, so I'm getting up towards my other pin there. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to take about one stitch in front of my pin and I'm going to take, do my tacking stitch. I'm clicking, in, I'm clicking, uh, pushing the polka dot button. Okay, that's my technical term, the polka dot button. Okay, okay, and I'm going to take the second one and then I'm going to cut. All right, so we've got our outline done, our out, our lining, not the lining, this is the outside of the bag done. Okay, so we've got that done. Let's trim some of those little threads off here. Okay, all right, then what does it say to do? It says, press the seam allowances open. Now the one thing that I don't do that she always does is to press the seam allowances open. I kind of finger press them a little bit, but I don't find that I have to press these open. 
I kind of finger press them so that it, it, it sets the seam in there a little bit. I mean, it's so hard to press on this little round outside bag. And so I just kind of finger press them in a little bit, especially up here towards the top. Because then I can, then I know it's going to. I have to put some stuff together up here, and if I can kind of get this out of the way, it really helps. Okay. Then it says, sew the two purse linings with right sides together, starting and stopping at the end point on the seam. So same thing. I'm going to take my linings. So here's my linings. Put the right sides together. If I can get them apart here. There we go. Like that, get the pins again and we'll mark those edges where we're going to start and stop. So there's one there. And you want to make sure you're pretty accurate with those edges because then the clasp will fit nicely into the opening at the top. Get this one. So try to be as accurate as you can with your marking. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. So this is the lining. I'm going to start right where the pin is. I'll take my tacking stitch. I'm just going to tap my foot controller and it'll go ahead one more stitch and I'll do it again. Okay. I, I kind of do that instead of the back tack, I guess because I'm a quilter. I don't like to go backwards because the machine does slightly veer off to the to the left when it goes backwards. It's because the feed dogs, you know, go the other direction. So we're just, I've got my foot, or my fabric right along the edge of my foot, so I have a quarter inch seam going around the curve here. Just take your time to go around the curve. go. Coming up to the other pin. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches. I'm going to stop about a stitch from the pin. Do my tacking. And I'm just going to tap my foot controller and it'll advance the machine one more stitch. And we'll tack again. Yes, hold the donut button, Jan. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, you got to hold it in, otherwise it won't go. So yeah, so I'm pressing this one right here. And the same thing with the reverse button. If you want to use the reverse, that's fine. But you have to hold it in while you're, want, you're reversing. Until you're ready to stop reversing, then you let go and it'll go forward again. But I have a tendency to miss with that one, so that's why I like this one instead. So I just do it twice on these kind of things. Okay. So then it says, to, again, to press the seam allowance is open, but what I usually do is just kind of finger press that the area up here so that it's just kind of, it makes a little bit more of a seam. I don't always go all the way around because it, it's round and it isn't really going to show anyway. Just to kind of get this organized the way I want it. There we go. Okay, so this is the lining. And now I'm on page 12 of the book, if you're following along in the book. It says, insert the lining into the purse with right sides together. So I'm going to leave. We're almost done. I mean, this is how easy these are. Okay. So I'm going to show you one of the other little, now this one I don't have to do it so much. But one of the other little tricks that I learned, I had a lot of trouble with my corners lining up. These corners looking nice. And this one is easier because, as you can see, it kind of gives you a V at the top. The other one we do will not do that, so I'll show you a little trick that I've learned with these. Okay, so I'm going to take the lining and I'm going to turn it right side out because I want the right sides together. So I want to put this inside of the, the body of the purse here. And hopefully I actually cut these out and they're both so look, they're going, both going the same way. I did it. If you have directional fabric, be aware of that. So, all right. So then I'm going to slip this down inside here. Helps if I put my hand inside of it. Inside of here. Okay. 
And then you want to line up all your edges. I'm going to put a couple pins in here. And I found that pins work better for me for these little things than the, um, I have a little more trouble with the clips because they're a little too big for this small piece that I'm working on, so I usually use pins. Got my fancy little magic pins that I love. Okay, so let's do this. Whoops, looks like I have a Maya hair on my fusible fleece too. Sorry guys. She was helping me this afternoon. I'll have to show you what I was working on before I before we end the night. Okay. So there's that. Now one of the things I am gonna actually do this. No, it, it might be okay. These are kind of bead at the top because of the way this, this pattern's done. So what we need to do is we're going to sew from here around the other side and down to here. Okay? So I do want to put a pin in this little corner because I want to see where I'm going to end here. Where the stitching is in that little corner. I want to put a pin there. And the other one that we're going to do, I'm, I'll show you my little trick. Because when they're straight on the edge, it's harder to get this little area to be flat. Okay. So one, on, on one side though, we're going to leave a little opening, maybe a couple of inches long, so that we can turn this whole thing right side out. So this one I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this whole, this one. And I usually just do one side at a time. I find it's easier for me. And for me, it depends on which works for you. Um, sometimes I do them this way. You want to make sure that you don't catch the other side. So I'm going to sew it from the, from the fleece side. I'm going to start right where that pin was. I'm going to do my tacking again. Because we don't want to sew through the other side so that it makes it hard to turn. I'm going to tap my foot controller and do one more tie. Then we're going to go up this side. Oh, I got a spider. Woo! That was exciting. I thought I saw something move. I have a lot of spiders around here. Okay. So I'm going to go up to that corner. I'm going to turn the corner. Now this side we're going to sew the whole thing. The other one will leave an opening. So we're going to go along the top. Now this top happens to be flat. But the other little smaller change purse, it's curved. Okay. Then make sure that you're not sewing through the back here. So I'm just going to pull it back. And then I'm going to sew to my pin. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. So this is why I like the J foot on here instead of the quarter inch because this foot goes up over those little bumps a lot better. Um, the, the quarter inch piecing foot is kind of short and it doesn't like bumps too well. So I usually use the J foot when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Okay, and we're going to cut that. So we got one side done. Okay, and then I'm going to take these pins out so I won't stab myself. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, okay? But this time I'm going to leave just a little opening like from here to here so that I have a way to turn this. Just need a couple inches. And most of this girl's patterns are like this. This is how she does them. And But what I've learned is if I turn this back, and I sometimes even clip them so I don't catch them. If I kind of turn this back, see where the little, that's where the, the pin, if I put my pin in, I think you'll see it better on the camera. Get the pin in there, so then I think you'll see it better. But we want to start where we stopped when we came around the corner there. This one lays really nice and flat without doing anything extra, but when we do the other one, it's a little square, more square, and I'll show you my little trick I learned. Okay, so I'm going to go in there. Oh, and by the way, I am using um, I'm using cotton thread. Got to get my quarter inch here. There we go. I'm going to do my tying stitch. 
tap my foot controller and do one more. But the remember, we're just going to go up to around the corner and stop there so we have that opening in the center. And if there's some of you here that have not purchased the book and you want it, I do have more books now too because I got those from her as well. Okay, and then we'll go up here and we'll tie a couple of knots up here and then we'll leave this little opening so we can get it get it turned. Pick that pin out so I won't lose it. We'll start over here, leave a little opening. Anybody have any questions so far? Has anybody ever done these kind of purses before, something similar to this? Most of our patterns, even though this is a simpler pattern, are very much like this. They're done kind of in the same um, order, and they're pretty easy. So I like her patterns because she, she keeps them very simple. All right, so we're going down here to where the pin is, and I'm going to do tie my knot. Okay. All right. So now we can turn. It says turn the pouch right side out through the opening. So that's what we're going to do. We left a little opening. We have the two sides. This is where the first clasp is going to go. Okay, find the opening here. Whoops, there we go. It's right here. So I'm going to pull this out through the opening. And this is where I found also that with this, um, this fusible fleece, it's much easier to get this turned because I was struggling with that other, the other batting. So I think that was part of my problem to begin with is that I was using the wrong type of batting. Okay. So then we're going to turn this right side out. And then I'm going to also oops, I'm going to turn my, move my chair a little bit. I love this turning tool. This is so nice because then you get this beautiful little corner here. It's hard to use Grandma's little trick. I know a lot of you know what that means on um, these because they're so small. So I have a hard time using Grandma's little trick. So I don't usually, on these I use my turning tool. So we're going to get the other one. Oops, second here. Haven't got it quite turned right side out. There we go. Get the other side. There we go. So there's the little corners. And they're nice and smooth. And then... I'm going to slide this lining down into the purse. Look at there. And those nice, those little corners, see how nice and beautiful they are? And then we're going to go ahead and slide it down in there. And that is our first purse. So we also need them to, that little opening, I'm just going to go ahead and I'll, I'll do a little bit of ironing here. I'm just going to get up and iron next to me here. You won't be able to see me. But what I'm going to do is iron this opening, um, the quarter inch pieces in, and then iron the top. Because we want the top of the purse to be nice and smooth when we go to put it into the purse clasp. So I'm just going to go ahead and stand up here for a second and, and iron just a little bit and then I'll be right back here. It's hard for me to show you. I, mean, I think I might be able to lift this up so you can kind of see. I'm like, I'm, my iron's right here, so get my book out of the way so I won't burn it. So I want those tops to be nice and beautiful and pressed. My iron went to sleep, so it has to get a little warmer yet. But I've had so much fun learning how to do these. And there's actually several other um, little, per there's a couple of other little purses in here that use these same clasps. So I'll show you one of the other ones in the book. It's really cute. And they actually use, I almost did that one, but it's a little harder to get the clasp in for your first time. This one was really easy. So I wanted to give you something easy to start with. 
because it was the some of the, the class were a little harder to get in. Okay. Just another I need to do another little press here. So it is important to press the tops to make sure they're nice and smooth because when you go to put the first class in it makes it a lot easier if everything's well ironed. Okay, that looks better. So there's our first little class, our first little purse. And I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to stitch across the top here where that opening is just to close it up. So it's like from here, we'll put a couple little pins in there. We're just going to stitch across that to close that up. And it won't show anyway. I'm going to stay fairly close to the edge though. Um, I don't want it to show when I put it in the clasp. So we'll stay about an eighth of an inch. It's just kind of a little top stitch there. My, my wrist keeps buzzing. <laughs> okay. So then I'm going to go ahead though and I'm going to put my needle into the center on my machine. So the piecing stitch on the same Q tab, the, the Q02 puts the needle on the right for the quarter inch seam. Q01 puts it back in the center if you were using a, um, using a, what I want to say, a piecing foot. So but the one thing I do do is I like to make the length of my stitch just a little bit longer. Oh, and I did an upgrade, so let's see, what did, it, did it put everything back? I did an upgrade to my machine last night, so it put it back to the default. So give me a second here. I need to go back to the default of 2.5, because I like 2.5. Sometimes when you do upgrades on the machines, it, it freaks out your, your, your settings <laughs> that you make, so sometimes you have to we do them. So I'm just going to do a little top stitch. I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch away from the open edge just to close that up. And what I do for an eighth inch is there's a little there's a little notch on the foot and then this is the center notch. So I, I kind of put the edge of the fabric right along the outside notch here to make my, my top stitch. It's about an eighth of an inch. And we'll just sew across the top here. It doesn't need to be neat, like I said. It'll, it, it, you won't ever see it because it's going to be underneath the clasp. But that's why we want to keep it fairly close to the edge. Okay. I had a bunch of this fabric, so that's why I've been making a lot of purses out of my little fireworks fabric. Okay. So there is our first purse. It's all done already. And then we'll put the clasps in at the end. So I'm going to do the other purse. Does anybody have any questions about this one? Wasn't that simple to sew it? I'm sure the bottom is all nice and even. I think it looks pretty good. So there's our, our first purse. Okay, so we're going to do the other one. Now the other one is a little bit more involved. Oh, I was going to show you the other... Quickly, let me show you the other purse that fits these this clasps that we're using. They're really cute. They were like they called them poofy, poofy, the puffy pouches. These were the ones that fit on the same um, clasp that we're using. This is the small one, and this is the larger one. And I thought they were cute. And then they open up wider. They have that open that open mouth on them too, so you can get more stuff in them. So I thought those were really cute. But those are a little harder to get the clasps in, so I thought we'd start with something easier. All right, so now we're going to go find the square pouch. And it's a pretty good sized pouch. I thought it would be good for my USB sticks. Okay, let's get some of these things off of here. So this is the square pouch. It's on page 38. And we're going to start basically the same way as we did for the one that we just did. So we're going to, it tells us, and here's the instru or the, uh, the pattern piece, so I, I, I copied that too. Now this one's different because you, you, um, you cut it on the fold. So you're going to fold your fabric. See, I folded my fabric like this, and I cut it on the fold like this. Okay, so it's different the way the pattern goes. So make sure you're reading your pattern closely because it says to put it on the fold. 
Um, so you cut only cut one of the outside fabric because it's on the fold, and then you cut one of the lining fabric. This is my lining fabric, and you cut one of the fusible fleece, and that's what I put that on the back, and I adhered it to the back. There is also a patchwork variation. I don't know if you can see this. This is the solid one. I just did the solid one. But you can also add a, like a patchwork on the bottom of it. And it, she shows you in the instructions how to do that also if you want to add this little extra color on the bottom. Okay, it's real easy. But I just decided I'd do just the, the, sim, the single colored one. Okay. Then and it tells you then if you're doing the patchwork variation how to cut that out. And then it explains it. All right. So we're going to start out basically the same way with this one that we did on, on the, the rounder one. We're going to hear the fusible fleece to the wrong side of the pouch outside, which is what I did here. Okay. Fold the pouch in half with the right sides together. Sew together along the sides, stopping at the end of the seam mark. So I'm going to go look at my, on my pattern. I'm going to put the right sides together here. And this one also has just a very slight incline here and here. So you can kind of tell where it's going to go. But we will put the pattern up here and make sure that we have it even. Get my pin. And I'm going to sew to right here. Hopefully I don't stab myself. I have a hard time with these pins. They're very sharp. And I have to be really careful because <laughs> I'm always stabbing myself. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is the end right here. And I'm going to put a pin there. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew down here. Because the bottom's already sewn, so we don't have to do that. And we're going to sew down here. Okay? So I think I got them a little crooked, so let me see. I kind of want to make sure you get these pins kind of in the same place. I think I kind of got this one up a little bit too high, so let's see here. I got a little crooked, I think. So let's pull this one down just a little bit. There we go, that's better. I have trouble with this one because it's just a little bit harder to get it in the right spot. I'm going to bring this one up to match because I just want them to be the same. There, that looks better. Okay. And we'll do the same thing in the lining in just a minute. So it says, repeat step two for the lining. So fold the pouch in half, sew along the side seam, stopping at the end point. So we're just going to sew from here to here. You don't have to sew along the bottom because it's already, it's on the fold. So I'm just going to go up here and do the same, whoops, sorry. Whack the camera with my arms. Got my quarter, I'm going to go back to my Q02 for my quarter inch seam. I'm going to go right to where my pin is, drop my needle, I'm going to tie a knot, and then I'm going to tap my foot controller and tie another knot, okay, and then we're just going to sew to the bottom, quarter of an inch seam. Now at the bottom, I am going to do a reverse, because this, okay, this is okay to do a reverse down there, so I did do a reverse at the bottom. Okay, it doesn't veer, it, up here I have a tendency to veer off, so down at the bottom I don't have as much trouble. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start up where my pin is. I did turn it over. So I'm going to start where my pin is. I'm going to tie my knot. I'm going to go down to the, one stitch and tie another knot. And then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to do a reverse on this one. There we go. At the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's do the lining. We'll do the lining also. I think I put the lining under here. There we go. So we're going to put the right sides together. Get the right sides together. And then hopefully we do better with our pin marks this time. So here's the little edge there. There's not as much of a definite spot as there was on the first purse, because that one definitely had a spot where you ended. 
So this was it, this one's a little harder for me to get them even, so I have to kind of eyeball them too. Okay. Get my right sides together. A little more Maya hair there. And we'll look at it to make sure they look even. I think I did better on this one. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We're going to start here and we're going to drive down to the bottom. Quarter of an inch seam. I like this gray fabric with the little, with the little, uh, Go. I just did a little re reverse on the bottom. I like this gray fabric with the little, it has little uh, thread spools on it. Okay, we'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Drop the needle. I think I only tied off once. I'm going to tie off twice on this side. But there is going to be a little bit of stress at that, that um, corner, so you want to make sure that you have um, a good tie off there because that's going to be right below the clasp. Okay, there's the lining. Okay, so I'm going to turn the page. We're on page 40. It says adhere. Whoops, that's the, I've got to get the right thing. Attaching the lining. Oh, here we go. We have to skip a little bit because they have some, um, they have some, the patchwork variation is on the top of page 40. So we're going to make the mitered corners. So now this one, if you look here, this one has a, box, a boxed bottom or mitered corners. So in other words, I boxed the bottom, so that's flat right here. See? So it gave, gave it more room at the bottom and it's a little flatter. All right, but they're, they're really small, so it's only about, you know, it's about the width of my thumb here. So if you look on the pattern, that's where these little dots are, right there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take, I'm going to kind of push my finger into the corner here, and I'm going to pull these open, and I'm going to kind of finger press my seam. And I know, I know where the bottom is. That's where the fold is. So we want to line up that fold with the seam line so that the box bottom is nice and flat. Okay? And it needs to be about, I think it was about a half an inch. So I, I kind of measured this with my little seam gauge here. Where's my seam gauge go? I have a hard time finding it because it's always at the bottom. So I kind of measured this, and it seemed like it was about a half an inch. It's not quite. It's three-eighths. About three-eighths of an inch is all. So I kind of guessed and just kind of did about right along here. Okay? I'm, I'm kind of a good, I like to guess when I do these. And it doesn't matter. So if you have a bigger bottom, you know, it's going to have a, more of a bottom to it. So if you don't want it, if you want it to be bigger, go ahead and make it a little bit deeper seam. So I'm just going to kind of run my foot. I think that should, that'll work. I'm just going to kind of run my foot. My needle's going to be in the center. So I'm going to go back to Q01. And I'm going to kind of run my foot right along the edge there. Now these I usually do do a back stitch on, on the corners. Go off the other side. And this is all just quilting cotton that I'm using. There's some fat quarters I had. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure I've got the seams lined up there so that the, the fold of the bottom and the seam line up. So I don't have a crooked crooked bottom. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of run my foot right along the edge there. So this one has a pretty small box bottom. I'm going to cut the thread. All right, so there's the little bottoms on that one. We're going to do the same thing to the lining. I'm make sure I'm going to kind of finger press that seam in down there. 
bottom so that I can make sure I get it straight. Like that. There we go. And I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of run my foot right along right, like where the point is. So it's made it about 3 eighths of an inch. Do a little reverse. Get off the other side. And do the other one. Has anybody got any questions? I think everybody everybody's very quiet tonight. There's a lot of you here. I was I was really excited to do some of these purses. I've been trying these. I started trying to do these last fall, and I just couldn't get the hang of it. I was just really struggling with the hardware, and I once I got the right glue, I I I kind of took off with these. And the sewing part has not been bad, except I was using the wrong kind of fleece to start with. Okay. Now, the one thing that she doesn't tell you to do is I kind of like to nip these little corners off because they're kind of bulky with that with that um, little seam allowance on there. So I kind of nip these little corners off so they lay a little flatter. I'm going to do the same thing with these. So it's basically just a quarter of an inch seam allowance there. But they kind of they kind of stuck up on me. I tried one with it, and then it was a little stiff. So okay, so there is the this is the outside of the purse, and this is the lining. So we'll see what else she tells us to do. So insert the lining into the pouch with the right sides together. So I'm going to leave this one inside out, and I'm going to turn my lining right side out. Maybe do a little press here, so I can kind of tell where those seam allowances are. There we go. Turn this right side out. There's our little box bottoms there in the lining. Then I'm going to slide this in to the outside. Alright, now, this is where Actually, let's do this. Let's take this out again for a second. Let's, I'm gonna, I, am, I am gonna have to use my little trick. I have a little trouble with these because they don't lay very flat on the corners. So sometimes what I'll do is, if I'm having a little trouble with them laying flat for me, I'll just take right above where the stitching is. I'm just gonna take a little, I'm just going to snip that little corner there because the, then they lay a little flatter. And that's my little trick I learned as I was working on these. These ones that are a little squared in here, if you just release that tension a little bit, it's easier to get them to lay flat when you go to sew them. So let's try that again. And she doesn't tell you to do that, but I just found that if I did that, things laid flatter for me. Then they turn out nicely. All right. Now this one is going to be a little different in that we're actually going to sew all the way around. It says to sew all the way around, but I I know that when I did this, I did it by going to the center. I had a hard time sewing like all the way around without stopping, and that's the way she shows you in the book. But I this is the way I did it, and I did it more like the other one. It worked easier for me. So we're going to use some pins here. And then when we get down here, see how when I snipped those, this little piece right here in the corner is nice and flat now. And it's just, it gives a little bit of give so I can get this pinned in here and have it nice and flat. So that works better for me just to give it a little bit of give there. Okay, so we're going to sew... So we're going to do this one, even though she says to sew all the way around. I did this one just like I did the other one and did one side at a time. I found that just worked better for me. And I snipped that little corner, get the corners ma ma matched up here right where that sewing line stopped, put my pin in there. And since I snipped that, see how it lays flat for me, okay? Then I can turn this, flip this back, 
get it out of my way, and I can put this under my foot right where that pin is, and that's where I'm going to start, and I'm going to sew. Go back to my quarter inch seam, Q02. Drop my needle, and we're going to tie it off a couple times. Do another one. And remember, one side we are going to leave a little bit open in the center so we can turn it, but this one we're going to sew all the way around. So I'll go up to the corner, and I'm going to turn, sew across the top. Oh, and by the way, I did get the video done. If you haven't seen it, I did get the video done for the border function for the We Whisk Your Merry Christmas quilt. So I did that last night, and I put it up on the group. So it's up there so you can watch me doing the, bit, the, the border. And then before we end tonight, I'm going to show you what I worked on today. Okay, so here's the pin. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. It's kind of in the way. And that's where that... I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit blurry. If my arm gets in there, sometimes it gets blurry. But that's where the end of my seam is. So I'm going, I'm shooting for that, where the pin is. And then I'm going to tie a knot. But when I snip that little corner, it just eases that tension up there, and it's so much easier to get my corners nice and flat on the edges. So there's that one, okay, like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to get this all lined up on the other side. Oops, maybe. In this. I think I got some new fusible fleece and I noticed um, I noticed that this is a little bit heavier so hopefully when we go to put the clasp in it isn't a problem because I, I got some new I was running out and I got some new here about a month ago and this is just a teeny bit heavier so I'm hoping it doesn't cause any problems it seems to be sewing up okay okay and then down here again, we want to get to that corner. And so see, since I snipped that, see, I can get it nice and flat right there. I'm going to put my pin right where the stitching ended. And so if I pull this back like this, get it out of my way, and I can sew so I can see that corner. So I'm going to go right where my pin is, drop my needle and tie my knots. And I also have the pivot feature on my machine. I don't know if you know where that is. I like my pivot feature. It's down here with the, um, the it looks like a foot with a little needle going through it. And that way the, the, the foot goes up and down. When I release my foot off of the foot controller, it goes up and it goes down when I go down. So I kind of like that so I don't have to use a bunch of buttons. So it saves me a lot of, and I use it for, for piecing, like when I'm chain piecing, because then I can just stuff my next block. So now I'm going to stop up here. Remember, we need to leave an opening to get this turned. So we're going to stop up here. I might do a little back tack on this one. I think I can do that okay without me messing it up. We'll cut, pin out of there. And we're going to do the same thing from here. Now, actually, it's easier for me to start, let's see. This one's a little harder. I think I'll do it from this direction. There we go. Tie our knot. One more time. Get this pin out of the way so we can go around the corner. And down the other side. We're going to get down to that corner. We're going to tie in that. Okay. And cut. All right. So now we have our two sides. We left the opening. And when I, since I, I clipped that little corner, it just made it easier to get into those and see how much flatter they are. All right. Let's get these out of here. And I also noticed that if I do and I ease that seam a little bit, like even on the, some of the um, other ones that I've made, I've been doing that and it really helps. Okay, so pull this back a little bit. 
I'm going to reach in. This is where that opening was. I made this one a little bit bigger because the purse was my batting just a little bit or my fleece is just a little bit stiffer. So I wanted to make sure I could get it through the hole, okay? Alright. Now of course I have to find my point turner again. I don't know where it went. Here it is. I spend most of my life looking for my tools. Okay, so we're going to use the poke the little corner out. Like that. That's one side. Let's see, where the other side go here? I think we got everything kind of out here yet. Okay. This is the side we... There we go. It looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the rest of it. There we go. And I'm going to go, go back over here to the iron and iron that top. We want that top to be nice and smooth so when we get ready to put this in the clasp, it makes it really easy. And I noticed, see, I got a little wrinkly, so I might just press that in a little bit because I, you know, I made kind of a mess, you know. All right, so I'll go over here and iron a little bit. I'll tip this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing. You always want those tops to be nice and smooth so that they, they fit into the clasp well. And I might suggest that you try putting the clasp in this larger one first because the clasp is a little bit larger and the bigger clasps are a little easier to work with just because they are, um, you can get your hands in there a little bit better. So I made the mistake of trying making one of these with a teeny tiny little clasp first and I should have started with something a little bit bigger because the bigger ones I've not had problems with. Now I can get the small ones in too but the bigger ones are much easier to get in. Let's get this little opening. I'm, I'm pushing my seam allowances in so I can get the little opening closed. And then we'll stitch that shut. Let's see if I can get some of the wrinkles out of the, where I, when I turned it, I kind of got it all wrinkly. I can do that after it's put together even too, so that looks pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to do, we're going to go back to our straight stitch in the center, which is P01. And I am going to do the little top stitch where this opening is. I think I got it just a little off, so let me finger press it down in there a little bit. There we go. Put a little couple pins in there to hold it. Because we want that to be pretty straight so it goes into the clasp well. And even though this is a simple purse, most of her purses are pretty much constructed the same way. So even the purses, the bigger ones, I've done a couple of her other ones. And um, she does do some with gussets, so those are a little different. But um, most of them are done the same way and in kind of the same order. So you shouldn't have any trouble looking at the other purses in the book. But that little carry-all looks like it would be really fun. And it's a little more involved, so I thought maybe that might be a fun um, class that we might do the little carry-all with that bigger, that great big, it's actually a really big class. Okay, so we're doing about an eighth of an inch here. All right. There is our top stitch. Looks like I have a couple little strings hanging out here, so we'll those off. That one's hanging out up here too. There we go. So there is the square pouch. I always try to clean up all my little ends before I try to put the clasp in. There we go. So are, is there any questions about the basic sewing? So these are pretty basic class, you know, basic little bags. Um, this one did have the box bottom, which is nice. So there's the little corners. 
so that it made it mitered or boxed. Okay, so that's a little flatter on the bottom. All right. So, is there any questions about that? Well, we're ready for the class next. So this is this is the fun part. So, let's start with the bigger one. Okay, I'm only going to be able to put one one side of each one of these in. They're done the same way. You need to let, and, and, it, and it is important, you must let these dry before you try to do the second side. You have to let them dry for like a half an hour. I usually, they say 15 minutes, but I usually let them dry a half an hour, sometimes even an hour, before I flip it over and do the other side, because I don't want to take the chance of pulling everything out that I worked so hard to get in. So, I think we'll do the big one first. Let's do the big one first. So we're going to switch over here a little bit. I'm going to move my camera a little bit closer to me. Give me a second here. Just gave myself a splinter. All right, let's pull this over a little closer to me so you can see what I'm doing. So I usually have a piece of paper when I do this because I have a tendency to get glue all over me. Now she does have gluing instructions on, I can't remember where the gluing instructions are. She has a, a page in here that has all the gluing instructions. Oh, here it is. How to insert the round clasp. And then it, she, she has pictures in here. But when I do this, I do it just a little bit differently than she does. I, it was just something that worked better for me. So you can, but if, whichever works better for you, you can do. All right, so we're ready for the first class. So the first thing I do is the purse clasps come with this paper string. Okay? And whoops, I need the bigger clasp. We need, we need to use this one. So this is the one that's going to fit in here. What kind of iron? Oh, is my iron? I love this iron. Denise, this iron, I have two irons. I, I have that, you know, Euro Steam Evolution iron that, that I think you have one of those too. This black one is a chi. It's a chi iron. Um, and they make uh, mostly curling irons. And I got this at Walmart. I, I really like it. It was like $58 and it's a wonderful iron. It's got a titanium soul plate on it. I really like it. So I've, I've been using one of these for a couple years now. I really like it. I dropped my first one and broke it, so I had to buy a new one the other day. I, I dropped it on the floor and it just quit working. So in other words, don't drop your don't drop your irons. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this paper tape and I'm going to measure off so I have two pieces that fit along my clasp. So I'm just going to kind of you know roughly measure my clasp here, just hold it and pull it over like this, and then trim it off. We can always trim it off more if we need to. So I need two of these pieces, and every clasp comes with paper tape, or paper string, or whatever she calls it. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now the one, when in the instructions, and on a lot of her videos, because um, her name's Lindsay, Lindsay has videos too, and she usually cuts her paper, t her paper string into pieces and doesn't go around the corner. But I found that it stays in better if I do the corners. So I usually just do the whole, the whole width of the clasp. Okay. So here's my paper tape or my paper string. And the first thing I'm going to do, have a couple of these little clover clips. I always like to kind of open my clasp up, and I like to test fit my clasp just to see how it's going to fit in there. So I'm trying to get this, this um, camera in a place that is not in my way, but you can see. I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to put it above me so I can get it out of my hands because I'm going to need my hands here. There we go. All right. So I like to kind of test fit it on each side to see how it's going to fit in there. So see, this one is just a little bit wide for the class. So you kind of have to um, have to kind of what I want to say sort of it, when you put it in, it has to be a little bit pleated almost. So it, it'll be fine once you put the paper tape in, but I like to just 
test them so I know how they're going to fit in here. And just kind of, you know, you don't have to do both sides. I usually can tell from the first one. But when you're doing the sides, you want to make sure that this little round piece right here kind of goes right along that open edge where we made the where we made the corners. Yeah, so I think this will be fine. But it is a little, see it's a little big. The fabric is just a little bit pleaty. So just you're aware of that when you go to put it in. So I can I just know that when I go to put it in. Okay, so that's going to be our, our class. So what I like to do, it, it depends on which, which works for you. Sometimes I put the front end first and sometimes I put the back. But what I normally do is one, whatever side I want to put in first, I'm going to put this side in first. I like to, to fold the other side down and clip it down with a couple of these clover clips and get it out of my way. So I don't have that up flipping around because certainly I will get glue on it. And then remember, you know, then you have to figure out, you know, this is the part of the class that goes on this side and this goes on this side. Okay. So I think I'm going to be happy with this. Looks pretty good. And I can kind of see where I'm at on the sides. You want to make sure everything's kind of lining up on the sides. Looks pretty good. I think we'll be, we'll be fine. All right, so now I'm looking for a little glue. So give me my, I'm going to put my glasses on here. I love this fabric fusion, and the fabric fusion that I have has a little bit smaller tip on it. The ones that we have at the store are a little bit bigger than that, um, but those work fine too. Just be careful not to squeeze so too hard and get too much glue in your clasp. This one's a little smaller, so I'm just going to put a bead of glue. This bottle is getting close to empty, so. Now I cleaned this out right before we started, but you know, God forbid that it was still not clogged. So we'll put the, I've got a toothpick. The toothpicks seem to work the best here, so. See if it'll work now. There we go. All right, so we'll put it in this side. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to put a bead of glue. Let me see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way around this clasp. And don't get too excited with the glue. You know, you need a nice bead, but don't, like, fill the channel because then you're going to have glue everywhere. Ask Jan how she knows about that. And if you get a little glue, it's okay. I forgot to bring my paper towel, of course, Dan. You know how it is. I always have to go get something when I teach class. So this is the side we're going to do. I'm going to slide this in. And this one has to be kind of pushed in a little bit because, remember, it's a little wider. So I'm going to slide it up into the clasp. If you can still see me. Slide it up. And remember, this one's going to be just a teeny tiny little bit pleated looking. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now, then I'm going to flip it over so I can see it from the inside because we're going to stick that paper tape in now, or that paper string. Should I get this pushed? Oh, there we go. Sometimes I have to work from both sides until I get it up in there. Looks pretty good on the sides. This side is a little bit higher, so I'm going to pull this up a little bit. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. You can kind of look and see where that little round hole is. We want them even on each side, so I think I got it now. That looks better. All right. Then we're going to, now this is one difference. Uh, most of the gals that do this start in the center and go out. I, I just really could not do that. Maybe it's because I'm left-handed. So what I do is I take my paper string and I start on the right because I'm left-handed and I start on the right and I work around. If you're right-handed, you can start on the other side and work around. So I'm going to push my paper string into that channel. And I've got a piece of paper underneath here because I always get glue on everything. I'm using just a regular little smallish um, flathead screwdriver. This works, these work very well. That's the best tool I've found to do this. So I'm just going to push that paper string up into the clasp and it takes the purse with it. 
you can see it's just a little pleaty looking, but that but it's fine. It fits in there nice. I'm just going to work myself my way around there. Sure that I'm all the way up in there to work from the outside a little bit. I think. But you can still see me. It helps me if I put my arm down on the, the table so that I'm steady. <laughs> There we go. So I'm pushing that up in there. Now make sure you get the corners well. well. Okay. Looking good on the outside. I kind of look at the back while I'm working away here. Okay. And now I'm going to have to probably turn my string off just a little bit more maybe. Let's see here. And sometimes I have to go back because, you know, something maybe moved just a little bit as I was working my way across. So I'm going to have to go back and just slightly, you know, redo what I did. Just kind of, just take your time. I've learned that with these I have to be patient and just take my time and go across. After I got the hang of it, I'm doing pretty good. So see, now I've got this little, this little string is a little too long. So I'm just going to go ahead with and slip that off on the corner there because you don't want it to show underneath. And I've got a little bead of glue. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bead of glue right here, so I'm going to grab that with my screwdriver so it doesn't get stuck in there. Okay. I'm trying to keep the camera so you can see what I'm doing without me hitting it. All right, so let's push this in there. That looks better. So I'm going to get a little more glue. So I'm just going to get that glue. I don't want it to get in my the corner, you know, of my clasp. So, all right. Then I'm going to go back and see how I did. And I might need to go back and, and just do a little more pushing in the center there. I think that looks pretty good. And I'll check the other side. Now, see, I've got a little glue, but that's okay. Just let it dry, and then we'll do it with the glue later. Now, this one I remember when I did it. It's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit looser in there, so I had to work from the outside and the inside a little bit. Looks pretty good. It's looking pretty good. So as I can see that I've got the I've got the clasp, you know, the, the fabric's all the way in the clasp on both sides. Looks pretty good. And if you get some glue on your clasp, just let it dry because we can get it cleaned off at later. Just let it dry. Don't try to mess with it now. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this. It looks pretty good. Make sure this is all the way up in there. It feels good. So then, I'm going to let this sit for just a second. And then this, I bought these cool pliers. And you have to use a pair of pliers now because we're going to crimp these corners over here and over here. And I found these pliers at Hobby Lobby. They're very flat pliers. I found them in where the um, uh, glassware is. So, um, like where the glass, um, like where the stained glass and stuff is. Because they're actually for, for, for um, cutting. When you cut glass, you grab them with this and you can break your glass. And these are nice and flat. And then see they have these, these plastic coatings over them. So they won't mar your clasp at all. So I really like those. If you, do, if you only have regular pliers, take a, a couple of layers of batting and then lay it over the clasp and then crimp it because you don't want to mar your, your clasp with the, um, the, with the pliers, okay? So that looks pretty good. I think I'm, I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead. We'll just crimp this and we can move on to the other one. So these are really nice wide um, kind of duckbill pliers and they weren't very expensive. I think they were about with a coupon, I think they're like six or seven dollars. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab onto that, make sure I got everything in there where I want it. And I'm just going to crimp down just in the corner. So it's about, you know, it's about an inch. And then do the same thing on the other side. And I like these because I don't have to use the batting and I can really see then where I am crimping. Okay? So I'm happy with that. So this, at this point, we're going to let this sit because we don't want to mess with the other side until it's dry. So you're going to let it dry at least 15 minutes, and I usually let them dry longer than that. So we're just going to set that one aside. Okay? 
So let's work on the other one. So here's the other piece of paper string. I'll put that over there with that one. All right, so are there any questions? Well, let's do the other one so we know what to do. So here's this one. Now this one, as you can see, is a little different because these little pieces are going to be pushed in a little bit. So see how it did? So the clasp is narrower than the purses, and that's why it opens up so wide at the top. So we're going to, this is going to be a little bit different to put in, but it's not hard. And it fits very well. So let's do a test fit. And see how it feels to put it in. It's nice to test fit it because then you kind of know what you expect when you go to put it together. And this one fit really nice in here. Yeah. So see how it it kind of it kind of has a little pucker in the in the middle, but it but the top fits the clasp extremely well. So she did a really good job getting the pattern. You check the sides like that. So then you kind of know how, what it feels like to put it in. And that feels pretty good. I think that'll be just fine. Okay. So now let's go to our paper string. Got to find it here. And we need a couple pieces of paper string. And when she gets the clasps, the clasps come with plenty of paper string. So I'm just going to measure, kind of measure around here. And we'll cut a couple pieces of paper string. This is still the paper string from the other clasp. So I had enough to do both of them out of the same piece. <laughs> so she gives you plenty. I, I keep the extra pieces in case I need them. But all of the clasps come with paper string. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Okay, so those are two pieces for this. Get the pliers out of the way. So has anybody got any questions? You're doing okay? Everybody's very quiet right now. You must be concentrating. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do this side first. So I'm going to tip this one down with a clip. Let's get it out of our way. Like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my glue into the clasp. But this glue changed my my purse clasp life. <laughs> Once I found this glue, this is the glue that um, that um, Kimberbell recommended for their purses. And after I tried it, it was just like night and day. The other glue I was using was just plain old tacky, and it just doesn't dry strong enough, and it doesn't dry fast enough. And it was just so hard to get them in. Okay, so there's my glue. I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and slide this up in here. And like I said, if you get a little bit of glue on your fabric, it's okay, because this, this glue dries very, very clear. So, and I've, I've got a couple. I know I've got glue on it, and you can't even see it. Okay, so this one I'm a little off here. Push it up in there. So this one has a little bit of a pook, so you have to kind of work from both sides to get it in there. It looks pretty good. Okay. pretty good on the sides. All right. So then I'm going to take my paper string and my flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to slide this up in there. This just takes up the extra space that's up in there. And the bigger the bigger ones, I have a bigger screwdriver that I use when I use do the bigger clasps because this one's real small. You know, I, these are pretty small clasps, so I usually use a bigger one when I'm doing the bigger clasps because there's usually a little more fabric involved as well. So these are easier for the little one. Okay, make sure you get that corner well. Okay, so I kind of pulled my side out a little bit, so let's give that a little push there. Make sure I got the 
paper string in the corner there. Push this up into the next corner. I'm actually doing pretty good tonight. I don't have glue all over me. Sometimes I have glue all over my fingers, all over the clasp, all over the table. And this, it, when this glue dries, it's kind of rubbery feeling, so it's kind of weird feeling because when it gets on your fingers, you have to really wash your hands several times to get it off. Okay, so see, my, my paper string is a little bit big again. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this off so it won't show at the bottom of the class. That one went into the purse, so we'll take it out later. Over to the side. Okay, I got another little bead of glue. I'm going to make sure we get those off there so they don't get into the hinge. All right. But what really changed how these worked for me was the glue. It's totally the glue. And the fact that I used a different batting at first, the batting wasn't working for me. So these are so much easier now. Okay. That looks pretty good. What do you think? Looks pretty nice. See, I got some I got some glue on the clasp, but it, it'll actually like come right off. Just let it dry and then it'll scratch right off with your fingernail. So it's better just to let it dry first. Alright, that looks good. Now I'm gonna take my pliers. And I'm going to crimp right at the center there. And if you're going to do a few of these, go get some of these pliers. These were wonderful. And like I said, go to the go to Hobby Lobby. They were in the glass section. And I just really like these because I was trying to find a pair at the hardware store like this, and I just couldn't find a pair. But these looked really great. Okay, so there's the first side. You need to let it dry. So we'll let it dry, and I'll finish them up after a while, and then I will put a, but you just do the same thing. You're going to put your glue in here, flip the side up, and just glue it in just like you did the first side. Okay? All right. So these, this is what it looks like when it's all done. So here's the, that one that we just did. There's the, but so I really like the way this is, this is bigger here, so see how it opens up so wide. So it's a nice coin purse. I really like this one. And then this is the square one. And that's what it'll look like once you do the second side. Do this, the second side just exactly like the first. Okay. So we're ready to finish these up. I'll get them finished up a little later and I'll post them up on the group. I'm anxious to see yours. If you're, was anybody sewing along with me tonight? Aren't they cute? Yeah, I really, I've enjoyed making these little purses. One of my favorite ones I've done was this little purse here with the little handles. I thought this was really cute. It's not very big. And there's one in the book that's like that too. And um, there's one kind of like that in the book. And towards the back, that uses the little heart clasp. And it's, it's about the same size. It's really cute. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that, Jan. I tell you, I've had lots and lots and lots of trial and error with these because I started working on these like last October or about the 1st of November and it took me till June to get, a, to get them so that I could actually do them. So I am very happy that I, I figured it out, but it did take me, I had a lot of, I, I threw a lot of purses away. <laughs> so. So I did. I did really enjoy make, learning to make them, though, because I sometimes I just have to. I just have to learn it. You know, I have to make myself learn it. So, okay. Are there any questions about the clasp purses? I can't wait to see yours. Every fabric makes it look so different that they're just so much fun. If you want the book, I still have books. I have like four or five books in the store. I have all the clasps up on the website and on the in the store. So anything else you want to make some of the other ones? And uh, I have some, she has some other kits too. So it's like some of these purses that I showed you were made out of her little kits. And I haven't got those all up on the, on the website because um, some of them are not available. She, you know, they're being discontinued, so I didn't order the kits. That's where I got a bunch of these. So, But I wanted to show you what I was working on today. So this is for September. 
this is what I was working on today. Let me back up here so you can see me. I was working on Twilight Boulevard. So it, I've got the center is, is all, it's all put together, and then I got the whole center um, quilted. So I'm ready to do the border. I haven't decided how I want to do the border yet. So, But this is going to be the two middle um, weeks of September. We're going to make Twilight Boulevard, the, pe the bench pillow. And then next week will be software week, and we're going to do a lace bowl. So this is the lace bowl that we're going to do next week on the sessions on software. I like making lace, and I, I love bowls, so I made a bowl. Let's see. Will you be at the shop on Tuesday? Yes, Marianne, I will. Yes, I will. Oh, for Design Center, yep. How, how, what does a carry-all bag look like? Oh, okay, let me show you. Uh, Nancy asked what the carry-all bag looked like. It's in the back of the book. It's on page 45. I didn't want to. I, want, I kind of wanted to start with this one, but I thought it might be a little more complicated. I thought we needed to do a couple simpler purses, but isn't that cute? It looks like a little tote bag with handles, and then it's got the clasp in the center. And the clasp for that one is pretty good size. It's like the biggest one. So look at the clasp. This is the clasp for that one. It's in a great big package. So isn't that fun? So yes, I'm, I'm anxious to try this one. I thought that would be a fun class, so we may have to make that one. The other one I really like in here is the 50s purse. So here's the 50s purse. So this one's big. The clasp for that one is this. So see how wide the clasp is? So it's a big clasp. And that's this purse right here. I thought that was really cute with the handles on it. So that's another one I'd like to try. So I'm gonna, since I've got some of the clasps now, now I can try some of these bigger ones. But I wanted to um, try some smaller ones first and then branch out a little bit. So, okay. So are there any other questions? So next week will be software at 6 o'clock. And then the following week we'll start Twilight Boulevard. So I think I think it's the following week, isn't it? Let me check my calendar and make sure I got the weeks right. I, I get mixed up because we also have Labor Day weekend in there. So i got to find my calendar. So I think that's right. So this is the 30th. Next week will be, yes, will be the software class. And then on the 13th, which would be the next month, Sunday, the 13th and the 20th will be Twilight Boulevard. And then the 27th, we're going to do a scan and cut class, and we're going to make another um, Halloween project. So I'm not going to tell you yet. I haven't got it done yet, so I'll post it soon. Do you need the lace program to make the bowl? Yes. So, Cindy, yes, you do. The way I'm going to do it, it is done in the lace software. Um, but if you don't have it, that's fine. You can just watch. Um, and you can see the lace software is not terribly expensive. And you can also use it in conjunction to PEP. So, doesn't the quilting, the boo pillow, cover up your holes for the lights? No, it doesn't, Jan. Because when I did the same thing with... Um, the boulevard as I did with um, We Whiskey a Merry Christmas, I did the stamps. And so, no, it doesn't cover the stamps. It goes around them. Or it doesn't cover the holes. It goes around them. So, no, it's fine. Okay, was there another question? I think I got them all. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, if you have questions about the purses, let me know. The rest of the products are on the website. So, if you need some more clasps and want to make some more, I just thought they'd make such cute, like, like this one, you know, with the gift cards. You know, these I'm going to use. I'm going to put my, um, this is the one I'm going to use for my USB sticks now. And put my USBs in here because it's a lot prettier than the bag I'm using now. And um, I'm going to use, but I just want to make nice gifts for people to make gift card holders. So, and these clasps are not very expensive. So, makes a nice little gift. This is a real small purse. There's a couple of real small ones in there too. So, that would make little coin purses for little girls and stuff. So, okay. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. And I imagine we'll go back and we'll make a couple more purses. Yes, Jan, I do. So the, the batting, um, this is for the pillow. And I'm going to make the pillow and a wall hanging. So yes, there's. I just got muslin on the back of this one. But then I'll put um, regular pretty fabric, quilting fabric on the back for the wall hanging. So yes. All right. So I will... 
I will finish these up a little later. I'll let them dry for a while. I'll finish them up, and then I will see you next week, and we'll do some lace. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Nancy, oh, do you have to purchase the book? Um, if you want the patterns for the purses, yes. Oh, and Colleen asked about the Kimberbell in September. Um, Kimberbell in September, we're doing the um, we're doing an event. It's Spooky Soiree, and and then and Kimberbell Club is going to be a really cute little zipper pouch. It looks like a pencil. It's really cute. So that that'll be fun. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Keep asking your questions, and I'll answer them after we're done. So I can I'll go. I always go back and answer all the questions. So thanks, everybody. Bye.